And there's a, que a key question here that I want to ask, want you to think about. It's a multiple choice question. That is, who is your audience? Is your audience the, the director, the producer, the agent, the actors, all of the above? You might be surprised that it's none of the above. Your audience is the reader, sometimes called the story analyst. Now, what happens to your script when it goes to a producer or agent? You finally got them to accept it. You've sent it out to them. What do they do with it? They don't read it. They hand it off to a reader or story analyst who writes the coverage, either recommending your script or not recommending your script. Now, these readers are overworked. They're underpaid. They read fast. And they're looking for reasons to say no. So what do they really want? How do you get them to say yes? But well, one thing is readability. They're looking for readability. And that sounds like a general, vague term. What's that all about? The ease. And, and notice that word ease. The ease in which your script can be read, understood, and enjoyed. That's readability. They're looking for an easy read, a good read. So that begs the question, what makes a script readable. And there are five qualities or principles of spec writing that I want to talk about now. And these are really at the core of the course uh, because these are, uh, th we'll be talking about these throughout this, uh, this webinar. And so let's just go through them briefly now and see if we can understand what readability really is. A script needs to be clear. And I'm going to say something that's, that's kind of shocking. Clarity is more important than literary quality. Now, what was uh, Jim in the building when it exploded? Uh, what was her name? Is, the, is this a flashback I'm in or not? Now, where am I? What's the location? These are the kinds of questions that readers are often asking themselves as they're, as they're reading scripts. You just absolutely have to be clear. You cannot afford to lose or confuse a reader. So don't be subtle. Don't be abstract. Be literal and visual. If you have to make a decision between uh, whether you should be clear or clever, opt for, for clarity. And if you can be clever at the same time, that's even better. Script has to look right. Short speeches, short paragraphs, white space. 120 pages or less. The formatting does not have to be perfect, but it, it, must, it must not become a distraction. We can't have uh, so many errors or inattention to, uh, to format that it becomes a distraction to the read. We want this to be readable, right? Avoid technical intrusions and the use of a lot of caps. Your screenplay, your story needs to flow like a river into the mind and heart of the reader. Use specific language, specific details, use active voice. Uh, passive voice would be, she is cooking. Active voice, she cooks. It's stronger, it's quicker, it's more active. And we often miss opportunities to characterize by writing vague descriptions such as, he leaves. Well, how does he leave? Does he stomp? Does he trip, skip? You can characterize your character by using specific language. Economical. You want to provide specific details, but uh, be judicious with those detail, details. Say as much as you can with as few words as you can. I mean, you've, you've heard the expression, less is more, right? And we're talking about economy. I remember watching uh, Escape from Alcatraz, and uh, <clears throat> the warden asked the S. Clint Eastwood character what kind of childhood he had. And I can see most writers would start thinking about the backstory they created and the character sketches and could write a very long speech about how he was beaten as a child and so forth. What the Clint Eastwood character actually said in response to that question was short. In other words, the warden said, what kind of childhood did you have? Short. Less is more. Script needs to be entertaining. Use an entertaining style. 
rather than an informative style. I see too many screenplays that are just informing me about what's happening, kind of like a, a news article. Don't be matter of fact. Dramatize. Have fun. And most importantly, be creative. I mean, you are a creative writer, right? But what's the most important thing you can do to open up your creativity? Relax. Relax and have fun. You can't write well if you're uptight. And to help you relax, find a, a, a good place to go to in your mind. Be in a relaxed state of mind and go ahead and start writing. You want to be creative. What is creativity? Well, it's not to create something out of nothing, and that's often what we think. We, sometimes we go overboard on trying to be creative. Most often it's a new twist on an old idea. I mean, I've been watching the mail hoping to receive a script uh, with the title, The Three Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. That would be a new twist on an old idea. Johann Gutenberg is uh, credited with uh, creating the greatest invention in the last thousand years. And that was the printing press, movable type. And how did he come up with that idea? Well, he already knew what a coin punch was. And he was visiting a winery uh, in a relaxed state of mind. And uh, he was watching the wine press operate. And he, bingo, he put the two together, wine press, coin punch, and we have the printing press. So cre creativity is often combining two old things in a, in a new way. I mean, we've seen this recently with uh, mixed genres, uh, cowboys and aliens, taking two old genres and combining those in a new way. OK, let's go to the next common blunder.